Half in the bag. Fuck movies. Oh. Hey. You owe me four bucks for this beer, you cheap fuck. How's the VCR repair work going? Oh, pretty good. Uh, I've spent almost the entire day trying to wear down the batteries on this flashlight. Oh. So it's almost there, I think. How long have we been working on this VCR now? Oh, geez. Several weeks, at least. Yeah. It's a good thing this old bastard has no concept of time. I, I think that's because he died. Oh, really? Yeah. He went into the bathroom like three days ago, and he hasn't come out. I guess I would explain the pool of blood that's forming outside the door there. And the smell of decomposating humans. It does smell a bit like an open grave in here. We'll give it a couple days, and if he doesn't come out of the bathroom, we'll just steal everything in this house. Okay. And then we can, we can burn it down to get rid of the evidence. That sounds good, yeah. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Welcome to Half in the Bag. I'm Mike. And I'm Jay. And we're just a couple of horrible frauds that pretend to fix a VCR while we milk an elderly man out of his life savings. And we talk about movies! Yeah, that's right. Uh, we've noticed a theme developing on the previous episodes we've done so far. On our first episode, we talked about the Adjustment Bureau and Drive Angry, and we just saw these movies completely at random, and it turned out that they both had sort of spiritual themes. And our second episode dealt primarily with aliens invading Earth. The film Battle Los Angeles was about sophisticated, hostile aliens attacking the city of Los Angeles. Things blowing up, amazing special effects and action sequences. And the other film was Galaxy Invader. No! And we realized that this week, both of the topics we're going to be touching on deal with geek culture. Uh, the first being the movie Paul, starring Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, and the second being our trip to the Toronto Comic Con. Both felt very connected, and it's kind of funny in Paul, there's a scene where there's like a state trooper and he asks them why they're in America, and they're like, well, we're going to the Comic Con. And he's like, what? Yeah. What's the Comic Con, you nerds? <laughs> and then the exact same thing happened to us as we crossed over from the United States into Canada. You know, she's checking the car and asking us why we were in Canada, and we're like, we're going to the Comic Con. She's like, what? <laughs> she didn't know what the Comic-Con was, and then she looked it up on the computer. And... At least in the movie Paul, they weren't given the full body cavity searches like we were. I didn't think that was very necessary. No. I mean, I know it's Canada and all, but do they really have to use moose antlers? <laughs> so in the movie Paul, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost play a couple of English tourists that are traveling across America to visit all the famous alien hotspots like the black mailbox in Area 51, and along the way, they meet a real alien named Paul, who's on the run from the government. Going on a road trip, huh? Yeah. A tour of America's most famous UFO hotspots. I hear that. I cannot believe we're gonna see Area 51. Uh, Mike, what did you think of this movie? I, I rather enjoyed Paul. The, the trailer for this movie was was just terrible. It was would, pretty bad. Would you agree on that? Yeah, it was It was very, it made the movie look really broad and really stupid, dumb like stoner humor and, and crotch kicks. And a couple of the jokes in the trailer didn't quite hit home for me. And it, what if he inserts a probe into our, you know what? Well, apparently they don't do that. Anyone want one of these? Eh, anyone? And then I saw that they wrote it together and I was like, well, there has to be something to this movie. And then I right. saw it and it's a winner. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Um, your thoughts on it? I, I, well, I think that Shaun of the Dead and, and Hot Fuzz are probably two of the best comedies of the last 10 years. I think they're both incredibly sharp, incredibly clever, yeah. uh, well-executed movies. And I was worried that this was going to be sort of a dumbed-down, broad, sort of more American-style comedy, which is what the trailers make it look like. Don't worry. I got it all under control. <laughs> um, Paul is a very likable alien. Um, He's not written too goofy, yeah. too wacky, too over the top. And the CGI is not like awesome or amazing or completely believable, but it doesn't matter if the character comes through. Yeah, I guess because of the performance by Seth Rogen, you just sort of watch it as another character in the movie. Um, the interaction between him and all the live actors feels pretty genuine. Seth Rogen does a really good job playing that character, playing sort of the laid back kind of schlubby, fun guy. He's just another dude. But it was just like the voice didn't 
quite match with the, the look of the character. It didn't seem right it, for it, the... It stood out. Yeah. After a while, though, I mean, it, it's, it's well done enough to where after a while you get used to it. But for the first, like, half of the movie, it kind of sticks out like voiceover. Yeah. Well, the whole movie sort of feels like an attempt to sort of meld two styles of comedy because you've got Simon Pegg and Nick Frost and... and the stuff they did with Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. But then you also have Greg Matola who directed this, and Seth Rogen, who kind of, they both sort of come from the Judd Apatow right. school of comedy. So trying to meld those two styles, one incredibly clever and smart and funny, and sort of, uh, not dumb, but more lowbrow yeah. humor, and trying to meld those two together, yeah. as, it's, as far as the tone goes. It's a traditional kind of road trip movie. Mm -hmm. and, and where it uses its road tripness Road trippery? Road trippery appropriately. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I, yeah it, I, I agree as far as like Shaun of the Dead goes, it didn't reach like those heights of emotionalness. Yeah. And this movie got eh, it's a little more middle of the road, but um, it's very entertaining. Yeah. And well, there there is a moment in this movie where that reminded me a bit more of Shaun of the Dead where Paul is reunited with who the little girl that mm -hmm. he first saw him when he first crash landed on Earth. Now she is 60 years later, and and they have sort of an emotional moment. Mm -hmm. And that reminded me a bit more of the the tone of something yes. like Shaun of the yeah. Dead. Tell me which way the little green guy went. Why are we holding hands? So we look like a family, just a couple of regular guys walking down the street with a small cowboy. I, I think what drives this movie are the two main characters. Yeah and Paul. Um, they, they work very well together, of course, as they have in the past. Right. Those two guys, like Simon Pegg specifically, very good at um, subtleties in the yeah. performance. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a moment where they, they take out their, I don't know what, what it was, it's like some sort of... The little visor with the, the flashlight the visor on it? The with the yeah, flashlight. Yeah. I'm sure it was some sort of nerd. It's like a Wonder Woman logo. It, it, was. it was something. Yeah. And then he's like looking at, at something and Nick Frost is to the left of him and he looks at Nick Frost and then Nick Frost looks at him and then they both like get hit in the eyes <laughs> yeah, with it. Yeah. And, then it's, and it wasn't like, like this big joke. It was just a really subtle thing. Yeah, There's lots of little moments like that in the movie yeah. that I appreciated. Yeah. And, um, and they didn't play up the drug references too much. There's one great scene where Kristen Wiig smokes, <laughs> smokes pot for the first time. Yeah. And she does bang up job. I really like her. Well, that's an interesting character too. Her sort of, the, the way her character evolves over the course of the movie, I thought was fun because it could have just been the typical girlfriends. All yeah. these movies have the, the girlfriends and this one they actually did something a little more interesting with it where she starts out, she's very religious, she's very Christian. She sees Paul and that makes her question all of her beliefs. Yeah. Uh, and, and a bit of cleverness in the script too. A little metaphorical, yeah. not too over the top. like. It wasn't a coincidence that Paul repaired her eye. You know, he helped her see right. um, the truths of the universe and, um, yeah. and fixed her vision. And, yeah. you know, even even little details in the script um, were set up. They're, they have their first kiss moment. Oh yeah, yeah. And they're looking into this store window, and they show um, like they're like, "This is an awful window display, isn't it?" And they're just making small talk. And they show the little cowboy outfit that yeah. they use later in the film when they right. dress up the alien. They could have just dressed up the alien in a stupid outfit when he's in a stupid outfit. That's prevalent through all of the previous movies that Simon Pegg has oh, written, too. Yeah, yeah he's, he's very much attention to detail, attention to set up and pay off. And uh, yeah, for the most part, this movie does that. So why Simon Pegg and Nick Frost don't have more feature films as, say, um, let's say uh, M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> is beyond me. Yeah, yeah. There are elements of this that reminded me a bit of a Kevin Smith movie in the sense that there's sort of a nonstop barrage of sort of pop culture references. Uh, in this movie specifically, sort of sci-fi and sort of geek culture comic book references. Uh, in a Kevin Smith movie, they're very sort of blatant. It's just sort of like referencing things, referencing things. And this one, at least for the first hour or so, the first two acts of the movie, they're sort of integrated a bit better into sort of the characters and the dialogue. Uh, at a certain point in the movie, though, it feels like it sort of becomes guess the reference, where it's just, they're just literally saying lines from other movies. Do you think that was self-referential? Uh, like intentionally being uh, over the top? And yeah, I have, it, it may to, have, I have been. to wonder. It may have I been, have because they're smart guys, so it's possible that they got like, to a certain point where they're like, Sigourney Weaver's going to get into a fight with someone, and the person's going to say to Sigourney Weaver, uh, leave her alone, you bitch. And I just picture them like giggling like geeks as yeah, they're writing it. Yeah. So it's it, possible. Like I, I, Simon Pegg at one point, like when they're talking about the truck, you know, he's like, he's like, I can't believe she's gone. And it just the way the way he says it, it's like oh, yeah, Luke yeah. saying, I can't believe he's gone about Obi-Wan. Yeah. And then even when the house blows up, 
<laughs> it, it really reminded me, and I don't know if this was intentional or not, but it really reminded me of when Jabba's palace ship blows up in Jedi, like the same way. Yeah. And, and it doesn't feel, in that case, it doesn't feel like a direct reference, but it feels like something when they're writing it, they're writing the house blows up and it'll be similar too. Like with a Kevin Smith movie, it's like, this is a movie about relationships and we're gonna shove in Star Wars references. Yeah. The point of this movie was two nerds who write comic books go to Comic-Con and their dream, they're like fantasy nerds, yeah. and they really live out the sci-fi adventure in real life. So it's yeah. appropriate yeah. that they have this scene that's similar to escaping the the job of palace slave ship. Right. Well, and it's nice to see a comedy like this because we've gotten so used to sort of the Judd Apatow school of comedy where they're all they're all shot very flat. All these comedies are just shot very boring. Yeah. And this is one, uh, the, the director, Greg Matola, I don't know if you've seen his previous movies. Um, he did Super Bad and he did a movie that's really underrated called Adventureland. S Superman? He did the Superman movie, yeah. I Everyone thinks that. it was Brian Singer, but it was actually, uh, but then he followed that up with a movie called Adventureland, which is sort of more of a- Zombieland? Uh, no. <laughs> it's, it's nice to see a comedy that pays as much attention to the sort of visuals and the visual language of film as it does towards actually making jokes. It's very Spielbergian. It was a little Spielbergian, yeah. yeah. And, and Which um, makes sense given some of the other stuff. I think movie. it was, yeah, intentional yeah. Uh, to look like an alien movie. Yeah. My other issue with Paul was um, when, when we went to see the film, I asked the, the box office person, I said, how's Paul doing, you know? And she's like, oh, it's doing good. You know, a lot of people say they really, really like it, you know, and, um, but she says it is an adult film. That was the exact words. <laughs> Did she I, say that? Yeah. I don't remember that. She said that. And oh, okay. I was like, it's an adult film. And, and <laughs> she goes, well, you know, it's it's an R-rated film, so it's not selling as many tickets as, as it should yeah. or whatever. And I said, oh, okay, you know. And then watching the movie, halfway through, I was like, why is this an R film? You know, I, nothing in this film is, is R-rated to me. And then towards the end, halfway through, the dialogue starts to become kind of raunchy. There's more F words. Yeah. Every uh, Sigourney Weaver starts throwing around the F word, and Sigourney Weaver's got a potty it, mouth in this movie. Yeah. And, and to me, the script felt smarter than the F word. Yeah. They could have really made this a PG-13. It, it could have been a PG-13. Yeah. And that was my only like. It's not even a problem because I'm of course old enough to see an R-rated movie, so it doesn't bother me. But just from yeah. a from a marketing and from a financial perspective. They could have wrote the script in a PG-13 way and had the movie still work. Yeah. And there's a lot of movies that have been made PG-13 where you're just like, the, the movie, You've Stolen My Daughter, starring Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the actual title? That was the actual title. You've Stolen My Daughter. You've Stolen My Daughter and I'm Going to Kill Everyone in My Path to Get Her Back. That yeah. was the actual name of the title. I don't even remember. What was it called? Ta taken. taken. Yes. I don't I've never saw it. And not the mini series about alien abduction produced by Steven Spielberg. It was called Taken. <laughs> yeah. The whole movie is him murdering everyone in his sight. And there's no blood anywhere because yeah. it would have given it an R rating. And there's no F words, there's no blood. He shoots people and then they die, they just fall down. Yeah. And they go, oh. Like an old 1950s movie. And, and, and towards movie. the end I was like, is this movie rated R? <laughs> oh, and then I come out of the theater and I look at the poster and I was like, G? <laughs> and, and I was like, that movie, like, no kid is gonna go watch Taken. Right. But kids are gonna, not kids, but young adults are gonna wanna see Paul. Yeah, a movie like Paul, the vulgarity isn't necessary. Right, it was yeah. smart enough to it was where it didn't enough, need F-words. And it was funny enough and clever enough where it didn't need to rely on cheap swear words. Yeah. So, um, overall final thoughts on Paul? Uh, Paul is a very funny movie, very charming, relatively clever. Uh, doesn't reach the heights of Shaun of the Dead or Hot Fuzz, but I don't know if it possibly could because those two movies are nearly perfect. But a very funny movie, uh, a great cast, and uh, yeah, a lot of good kind of geeky references. Yep. Yeah. I, I would agree. Um, I would not compare it. I would not want to compare it to Shaun of the Dead. Would be, wouldn't be it, fair. It, for me, it's hard not to. As a standalone movie, just pretend you haven't seen any films that they've done before. Um, well, and if that's the case, then it's definitely an above average comedy. Yes, yes. yes. Um, considering what I was expecting and what I got, I was very satisfied with Paul. Um, I would recommend it, definitely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. To everyone, including Grandma. <laughs> if um, she likes 
to hear phrases like titty fart. Grandma would like this movie. Grandma would like this movie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's not good fellas, you know. I no, mean, that's true. Grandma won't have a heart attack watching it. It's, uh, you know, Grandma's heard the F word before. Oh God, yeah. Grandma's done the F word before. That's why she's Grandma. So on to our next topic. Well, uh, speaking of geek culture and comic book conventions, the opening scene of Paul takes place at the San Diego Comic-Con, and yeah. we just got back from the Toronto Comic-Con. That's right. We traveled all the way up to Toronto from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to yeah. attend and to have a booth at the Toronto Wizard World Comic-Con, where we met lots of cool Canadians, A, eh? and, uh, and had a lot of fun up there. Absolutely, yeah. Let's, uh, let's take a look. This is Mike Stoklasa, and we're at the uh, Toronto Comic Con here, Red Letter Media, representing uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, way up in the Great White North, known as Canada. Uh, the convention was good. We yeah. got to meet uh, Jake Lloyd. And, uh, I interviewed Dustin Diamond, uh, Screech from Saved by the Bell. And who also played Screech on Saved by the Bell. But, but I said that. But the, did you mention the fact that he played Screech too? I don't In think addition so. to his other famous roles, he also played Screech. Hey, did he? He was Screech? He was Screech in Saved by the Bell. Who was also on Celebrity Boxing. Yes. The, uh, you were, you were, you, you're like fixated on Celebrity Boxing. Uh, it was a very short-lived program. <laughs> and to me, it, it, it was the bottom of the barrel as far as entertainment goes. It was like, <laughs> it was like a throwback to the Roman Colosseum. Screech <laughs> fought Horshack from Welcome Back, Cotter. And yes. I guess they paired them up because they were both the, the wacky comic relief on the, on the series. Yeah. And, um, Screech was probably 25 or younger at the time, and Horshack was probably 50. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and Dustin just, he beat the shit out of him. <laughs> so I asked Dustin if he like, felt bad about that, and, um, and this is how that went. When you were on Celebrity Boxing, yes. did you feel bad about kicking Horshack's ass horribly. No, no, it's all TV, and he, I mean, everyone signed up. They knew what they were getting involved in. The gloves were super, super padded. I mean, okay. we used, you know, they weren't the eight ounce gloves that regular boxers use. We used, they weren't the big giant carnival gloves, but they might as well have been, you know. We had the head protection and everything else, and uh, as I saw that, it was pretty brutal. Time for a new attack. Oh, man. Oh. And then you got to interview um, a, a famous Kids in the Hall actor? I, I got to interview Scott Thompson, which was really exciting because I'm a huge Kids in the Hall fan. And uh, he was there promoting his new graphic novel, Danny Husk and the Hollow Planet. Danny Husk and the Hollow Planet? There you go. He actually kind of hit on me. It was weird. It was awkward. What did you do? He, well, when I was going behind the booth, he was in character as Danny Husk, but I said, is it safe for me to come back here? Is it, is it safe back here? And he said, it wouldn't have been an hour ago. It wouldn't have been an hour ago for a young man like you, but you're yeah. perfectly safe with me. <laughs> All right. Are you into older gay men? I, I am not, but I still appreciate the attention. Okay. Would you let that kid in your hall? <laughs> you, you would say it's a positive experience then? Well, it wasn't. Here's the thing. Everything's positive, you know, in hindsight. And uh, yes, at the time uh, when the gay troll was shaving my sack. Anyways, so um, a lot of other interesting things happened that weekend at, at Comic-Con. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of people approached our booth asking us, Jake Lloyd was sort of uh, kitty corner from our booth. He was within eye line. Yeah, if, if there wasn't a crowd, we could see him. And a lot of people were coming up to our booth and asking if he knew about the reviews. And they kept saying, well, we'll go ask him and come back and report, and nobody ever came back. So we took it uh, upon ourselves to just go over there and ask him to sign a picture so we're going to talk to Jake Lloyd and we're going to get him to sign a picture uh, to Red Letter Media. And make it out to Red Letter Media and just see what his reaction was. That was unprofessional. I'm sorry. 
And, and here we are in front of the uh, celebrity autograph. Oh, what's it? This was a $20 experiment. It, it was a $20 experiment. And uh, so we did that, and he didn't, I, I didn't see any reaction I from was it. watching his face, and I said, <laughs> I said, will, will you make it out to Red Letter Media? And he's, he was looking down, and he kind of went like this. He goes, like he made like a, like a perplexed look. Not that, that he's heard of Red Letter Media, but he's probably like, you know, Red Letter yeah. Media always sounds like red light district. It sounds like it, a filthy porno it, company. Yeah, so I think he was kind of analyzing it. It, it wasn't a person's name. It wasn't a so person's name. So may have thrown him yeah. off. And, and he was trying, like, I'm sure those guys have, like, a thing where they're like, you know, sign it. I love Adolf Hitler. You know, like, w they won't do certain things. Sure. So sure. I'm sure he kind of, like, what, what, sign it to what? And that's kind of the look. And I yeah. said, well, it's our movie company. We're going to hang it in our studio. And he goes, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, whatever. And he signs it, Red Letter Media. Another thing we discovered about Canadians is that they, they don't use the word rubber band. Yes. They, they say elastics. Yes. Um, and you're just like, what? What? I mean, it fucking says rubber band on the package. Like, hello? They say, get with it, yeah, Canada. I mean, uh, elastics? They're like, do you have an elastic? And we're like, what, all, what? I, all I could think about was like condoms. Yeah, it kind of sounds like condoms. Yeah. Like, so, so they say elastic, not condom, uh, not rubber bands. <laughs> Um, wow. Maybe they say elastics for rubber bands and for condoms. Yeah. And, it's possible. Uh, and that's why there's so many pregnancies in Canada. There, there, was, um, there was the guy that, that had a plastic voice distorter. Hi. How are you? You will be um, Anyways. So you also interviewed other celebrities too, don't forget. I, I did interview Darth Vader, mm -hmm. which was exciting because I, I am vaguely familiar with who he is. All right, so I'm here with, uh, what's your name? Darth Vader. Darth mm -hmm. Vader, I've heard sure, of him. He's a black guy, right? You look what? like a shit ball, you fuck. What was it like working what? with George Lucas? He smelled like coffee and B.O. Uh, uh, what did you think of the Star Wars prequels? They sucked my burnt off nuts. And then I interviewed uh, uh, a guy who proclaimed to be Kermit the Frog. Mm. I don't think it was actually Kermit the Frog, though. And uh, how did that go? It was incredibly awkward. What is your name? I am Kermit the Frog. And wh what might people know you from? I, I don't think it was the real Kermit the Frog. Have you ever worked with Dustin Diamonds? Who the hell is Dustin Diamond? I think it was an imposter. What's green and smells like bacon? How do you think Kermit the Frog feels? I mean, do you think he feels like Scott Thompson, always having someone's hand up his ass? <laughs> also, Ray Park was there, who played Darth Maul. Now, and I got the exclusive interview with Ray Park. Oh, oh, my, he did. Mike got the exclusive interview with Ray Park. Let's take a look at that. Hello, we're here with um, Ray Park, uh, who played Darth Maul. Uh, Ray, do you have anything to say to your uh, adoring fans on the internet? Ray Park did not want to talk on camera. Um, he covered himself in Legos. Did you ask him what it was like to play Darth Maul? I did, and he didn't say anything. I did ask Ray Park one question that has always been, you know, on my mind. I yeah. said, Ray Park, what was it like to write such an iconic pop song? Are you, are you afraid of a ghost? Am I afraid of ghosts? No. We ain't afraid of ghosts. <laughs> we ain't afraid of no ghosts. Okay, that's the proper response. Hey, remember when Peter Mayhew was there? No, Peter Mayhew... I was gonna sneeze. Peter Mayhew loves the fans. And he loves coming to events like this. Yeah, um, I would fact, agree. In fact, I talked to Peter Mayhew. This was off camera. And oh, I said, okay. Peter Mayhew, why do you do conventions? And he says, he goes, well, you know, I was, I was such an iconic character in Star Wars, and, and that has meant so much to people. And 
I was Chewbacca, you know, and I love meeting the fans and I love hearing their stories about how Star Wars has, has affected them and has changed their lives. I said, Peter Mayhew, I, I understand. At your next convention, will you not charge for autographs? And he, and he looked at me and he said, fuck you. Yeah. And then he started swearing at me and his handler told me to leave. Yeah, I saw that. And then he started throwing up dollar bills and said, I fucking love money. What? I love money. Give me more. He kept chanting, give me more money. Yeah. Um, it, and it got kind of weird yeah. in, a, in a satanic way. Um, he started. He started making weird growling sounds, like Chewbacca noises, or well, if Chewbacca were uh, a Lucifer, okay. If Chewbacca mated with Lucifer and had a, had a child, yeah. He did wear a fur costume in the '70s in a low-budget science fiction film that became popular. Yeah. And 65 years later, as he's on death's door, rubbing a felt-tip pen on a picture of himself for money is, yeah. is some sort of value. Um, <laughs> he is a fraud. Oh no! I also got interviewed by a local Toronto web vlogger named Sexy Nerd Girl. She came up to the booth and I said, wow, well, hello, you know, welcome to... You're too attractive to be hanging you're, out You're here. too attractive to be here. Hey guys! I want to take a sec to thank everybody for all your support on my channel. So we talked, and um, I'm sure I said something stupid, but we Probably. talked. We talked on her blog, our uh, vlog, and um, we talked about her vlog. Um, uh, her vlog. Her, her is v? it a is it a vlog? It's, or a I vlog? think you just say v. So you could say you talked extensively about her v. So that wraps up three days of Wizard World convention fun here in Toronto. Um, so that about wraps up this episode of Half in the Bag. Have you ever heard of the 70 minute Star Wars Phantom Menace review? No. And uh, we'll see you all next week when uh, we're going to review... <coughs> <coughs> oh no, you're gonna vomit. <coughs> oh no. Oh no. Did you just vomit in your hand? <laughs> <laughs>